Welcome back to Sunbird Garage, episode three. I can't believe we're on episode three already. But in this episode, we're going to talk about the rotisserie, the rotisserie that I bought for the project, how I got the car onto the rotisserie, and how it helped me get the project moving. And to be honest, it's probably the best investment I made on this project to get it going. Um, it really gave you the ability to turn the car in every different direction, get to any spot that you needed to work on. Um, so welding in floor panels and uh, other spots, it really, really made the job easier. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the rotisserie. Maybe I should show this car at some point. Maybe I should shave at some point. I don't know. But thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Well, now it's a spider formula sunbird. I picked these doors up from my friend Scott over in New York. I was out there for, for work, and uh, he had a decent set of doors, so I stopped by and picked them up. Stuffed them in the back of my little Scion XB toaster and drove them all the way back to Ohio and uh, put them on the car. These doors are way better than the ones that I had on uh, that came with the car, uh, but they're still going to need a lot of work. But we got the rotisserie in, so that'll be the next big project that we tackle here. I looked for several weeks to try to find a rotisserie that was used, somewhat local to me, but after looking for weeks and weeks, all I found were really scary home-built contraptions that I, I just didn't feel safe with. And they were anywhere from four to six hundred dollars. So I kept looking. I ended up finding this Tuxedo CR3000 on eBay, and they had a phone number on there to call them. So I, I went ahead and called them, and they actually they do that so they can get up from paying the eBay fees and uh, I bought it direct from the company. It was just under a thousand dollars if I recall delivered and I think it showed up in about a week or so after I placed the order. Assembling the rotisserie was very simple just followed the instructions and they were pretty pretty well detailed pretty easy to follow and it went together without any problems. What the instructions really didn't cover in detail was how to mount this to the car so we had to figure that out on our own. So what I decided to do was use where the bumper mounts were attached to the car. Both in the rear and in the front, they seemed like they were the logical place to attach this rotisserie. So next up was to fabricate the actual mounts to go to the car that would then attach to the rotisserie. So I went to the local steel shop, picked up some quarter inch wall 2x2 two two, uh, box tubing and used that for the, uh, the main part of the attachment. This was probably overkill, but that's what they had readily available at the steel shop, so that's what I bought. And then we got some quarter inch plate to use as the base plates, which again is probably overkill, but that's what they had. The rear mounts were very simple. They were just the, uh, the base plate with the 2x2 two two, uh, tube welded to it. Um, punched four holes for the, uh, the bolt holes and those were done. The front mounts were a little bit more complicated. Same quarter inch plate. We bent that over with a, an iron worker my brother had, punched the holes, and welded on the uh, two by two by quarter inch wall uh, square tubing here. My brother's actually the one that fabricated these mounts and they came out fantastic. He's one of those guys that can, you know, look at something and figure it out and make anything, fabricate anything, fix anything. He's just a, a mechanical genius. But he's got this really old, I think it's 1960 vintage, uh, called an iron worker piece of equipment that we use to punch the holes and make the bends and and it, it really worked great. It's really great to have access to this old equipment that still works fantastic. I actually have a video of myself using this tool to shear some angle iron that I used on the car in a later project. So I'll insert that here. So I need a piece of angle iron to cut. Well, when you got one of those, it makes it easy. This isn't mine. It's my brother's. Now that we had the mounts for the rotisserie, it was ready to be attached to the car. 
but I had to take out the axle first so once that was removed there was no more rolling this car around it needed to go on the rotisserie so I could actually move it around the garage now but once that was out of the way the rotisserie bolted to the rear of the car and the front of the car without any problems and then we just attached the beam that spreads between the front of the rotisserie and the, the rear of the rotisserie to tie it together Honestly, I didn't think this rotisserie with the car on it was going to fit in the garage. I thought I'd have to remove part of my workbench or something, but once it was all assembled and on the car, I had a whole inch and a quarter to spare and I could close the garage door, so it barely fit. Next, I had to remove the front suspension, which you would think, okay, the car's off the ground, you can get access to it, should be easy, right? No, not so much on an H-body. So what happens on an H-body is the camber bolts that you use to adjust the, the caster camber on the car actually seize inside of the bushings in the car so they, they rust to the inner sleeve of that bushing and once they do that you can spin that bolt all day long and it's not coming out. I used an air hammer, I beat it with a hammer, I did everything I could possibly do. I sprayed it with PB blaster and they just would not come out. So there's a trick to get these things out on an H body. I worked at these things for several days to get them out and I finally broke one in half and got it out and and then I talked to my buddy Bill some more and he said, hey dummy, you're doing it wrong and he explained to me how to do it. So here's Bill explaining how to do it. Okay. We have, uh, I've cut the front clip off this car. I'm not going to be using it. I'm going to be doing something altogether different on this car. So this is a perfect car for me to show you. It's easier with it being right side up. I should say upside down so you can see it better. Um, basically what I'm going to show you is explain to you how this how I do this and it's the way most professional mechanics do it nowadays um, here's your low control on bushing okay that's a lower bushing there's your bolt your bolt always gets stuck inside and you can't get the damn thing out so what you have to do is first of all don't come in with a sawzall or whatever a sawzall or a circular saw whatever whiz wheel and cut between here and here to try to cut the bolt. All you're going to do is damage the bolt, cut, obviously, again, and then you're going to have to find new bolts. You're going to damage the body, the control arms, and, and that's just not way to do it. Um, it's the way I'm going to show you is much easier and much less time consuming. Basically, if you notice right here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the outer shell off the control, off the bushing. The bushing consists of an outer shell, a rubber bushing inside that, and then inside there is a sleeve, that inner metal sleeve. That's what gets stuck to the control arm bushing, the control arm bolts. So what you have to do is basically, there's a slot in that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, there's a slot in that, and basically we've got to get in there, and we've got to separate that slot and get that detached from the bolt. So with that, I want to show you a little better view of the bushing in the control arm. This is the bushing, the outer sleeve. Be careful now. This piece, this, this raised piece over here, that is not the bushing. That is actually part of the control arm. That is actually what the bushing gets pressed into. So you do not want to cut that and damage that at all because that will destroy the control arm. Now, I'm going to go to another bushing which I already started cutting, disconnecting. I already cut this one up. And to show you, I already took the bolts off. The nut off, rather. The washer and the, the cam. Those come off pretty simple. Uh, the cam gave me a little trouble. Uh, it got stuck in the bolt or the bolt on the flat part uh you pry bar a little bit of I me mean, guy got it apart um now you can see i cut the outer shell off of the bushing the outer bushing you see the sleeve this is all the this is the metal part i just cut that with a circ with a i actually used the jigsaw and that jigsaw a uh, circular saw and i just sliced right into that and then i cut and put a slice kind of diagonally across and we, I just cut that right off of there and then just pried it back both sides. Then I cut the rubber out. The rubber is actually the hardest part to cut. Um, it's really tough to do that. Um, just use a razor blade or um, a whiz wheel will get in there sometimes and cut it for you too. But basically once you get it, it's rubber. You can just cut it with almost anything and get that out. And then you'll see, this is the inner sleeve that I was talking about. See that you'll find when you turn this bolt, if it's stuck, that sleeve will follow the bolt. So all you got to do is get it so you can see it lined up straight. Take a big, take a chisel or an air hammer and go in there. By the way, you could do the whole thing with an air hammer too. An air hammer will cut that apart. Um, go in there with the air hammer with a chisel blade and just basically separate those two pieces. Force that apart. Uh, you can 
get in there with the air chisel and separate further these pieces either side and then the bolt will just basically slide in and out of it once it's disconnected from that um, from the uh, the inner sleeve it really doing it this way will take probably about 10 minutes per bushing um, I've heard guys spending days on this it's really not necessary it probably takes 10 minutes per bushing if you don't have an air hammer and you're planning on doing a project like this and you're not equipped to do all that my recommendation is spend the 75 bucks, take it to a regular auto repair shop, and have them do this for you. Have them open all those bolts up and get them loose, and when you take it home, it'll fall apart. It's worth the, it's worth the 7500 bucks to do that. Um, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to do that. So, uh, All right, guys, now you know how to do this job. It's actually pretty simple. Bill did a great job of doing that illustration on how to get these bolts out of these cars. It's not an easy project. You know, the H-Body community is filled with, with great people, and Bill's one of those guys. I met him several years ago at an event, and we hit it off right away. He's, he's one of my best friends, if not my best friend, and he's been more than helpful on any of my projects, giving me guidance and ideas of what to do, so I really do appreciate his, uh, his mentorship on these cars. And I've got a few friends like that. I got uh, Ken Mahoy of Spider Garage. He's been very helpful, and I got another guy up in Canada named Zeke that he's my, my go-to guy for electrical stuff and other questions like that. But the you know, community really is great, and I, I really appreciate all the people that I've met in this community. But once we finally got the suspension off this car, I was able to actually turn it on its side. It took a little bit of effort to get this car balanced. You have to kind of put the center of gravity on the, on the middle of the rotisserie so that you can spin it over. And I got it pretty close to that center of gravity because I was able to turn this car over on its side and on its roof and every which way I needed to to actually gain access to the areas I needed to work on. Now that the car was able to be turned over, I was able to look at the bottom a little bit closer and see what I needed to attack. The first area I worked on was the pinch weld at the bottom of the rocker. This was just beat to heck. It was bent over where people put jacks on it, where it hit rocks, where it hit other things. I don't know what they did to this car. It was, it was pretty mangled, but with a hammer and dolly, I was able to get that pretty straight. The torque boxes, they were not great, but they weren't horrible either. This is a key area on an H body. Uh, these rot out and then where your rear control arms bolt to the car, uh, once that rots out, your, your car's done. It'd be really difficult to repair, but these were bad, but they weren't, uh, they weren't unfixable. But in the sunlight, the car didn't look too horrible. I mean, obviously there's spots that need to be attacked and need to be addressed. Lots of scale, but no heavy, heavy rust through. Well, at least that's what I thought. There were some areas that really needed some attention. So now that it was on the rotisserie and able to be moved around and rotated, I uh, made contact with my dustless blasting uh, company. And he gave me a price over the phone uh, and told me basically try to remove any and all undercoating on the car because that just makes it much more difficult to sandblast or dustless blast so I had to scrape all of the undercoating off of the car and fortunately for the most part it was pretty dried out so it flaked off pretty easily I used a couple paint scrapers I think I used a, a, a pneumatic scaler to blast some of it off but for the most part it all came off pretty easily this last picture here this area here really, really made me concerned that I could even save this car. This hole was rotted from the inner you know, wheel well all the way through the floorboard, all the way through the cowl into the car. You could actually look through this hole and out the back of the car. It was that bad. I was like, I don't know if I can fix this. So, But I went ahead and scheduled the blaster because I, I really felt that was the next logical step for this car. It was so many spots here that needed attention that... You know, doing it right was going to be difficult if it wasn't down to clean metal. Lots of scale, lots of rust, lots of crud that all needed to be removed from the car to, to be able to get in there and actually fix it. And that was a pretty enjoyable process to watch. I don't know that I want to do it for a living. It took the guy eight hours to do this car, and it's not a big car. So that'll be in the next episode. Well, Granny Sunbird wanted to make a cameo. And there she is in all her glory. But that was episode three. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, that, that rotisserie, I don't think I could have done this project without that. That tool really made this project 
you know, manageable. You could get to every spot on the car. You could get to wherever you needed to work on. You wanted to turn the car over to weld on the bottom, you could. So it was fantastic. Um, the next video I'm going to put together will be um, the dustless blasting video, actually. So that'll be the next video up in about a week. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.